And a sad story out of Webster where a woman nearly 100 years old is found living in a house of squalor. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. The Pope continues his visit to the U.S. today and he'll soon move on to Philadelphia. That's where Pope Francis will celebrate Mass on Sunday. More than a million people are expected and thousands of Catholics are already there, including a big group from New England and one familiar face from Central Mass. Jeff Saperstone has more. Bus by bus, they're already here. Catholics from New England making the pilgrimage to Philadelphia in place days before Pope Francis arrives. I don't have to go to Rome. He's coming here, so I'm very excited. This group from Worcester, Massachusetts, overjoyed at the chance to see the Holy Father. He's a people person. He's for people and for the poor, and he's a regular guy. <laughs> Meantime, this afternoon, those same New Englanders celebrated Mass at the Shrine of the Miraculous Metal Church in Philadelphia with a familiar face, Worcester Bishop Robert McManus, who just arrived here after spending time with the Pope in our nation's capital. In uh, Washington, D.C., the excitement was palpable. Bishop McManus spoke with NECN in Philly moments after getting off the train. He says the Pope delivered a powerful message to the 300 U.S. bishops. He urged us as bishops to uh, to be good pastors to our people. And it is the people Pope Francis has come to see. Tonight, final preparations are underway around Philadelphia for what will be the largest event on his schedule, a Sunday Mass on Ben Franklin Parkway, the conclusion of the World Meeting of Families Conference, where more than one million are expected, including so many from New England. It's an incredible blessing for, for our country and for the church just to have this, this beautiful gathering of faith, people of faith from... Today, Pope Francis delivered the first ever address by a pontiff to a joint session of Congress. Not surprisingly, the pontiff touched on some hot topics. He called for action on behalf of immigrants, an end to the death penalty, protection for human life, and race relations in the U.S. I am happy that America continues to be, for many, a land of dreams. The Pope's historic address to Congress was broadcasted live on several networks and seen by millions across the country. In Worcester, Holy Cross held a special viewing on campus for the speech, and our Andy Madison was there. He has more. It was a packed house on campus at the Ream Library. We were told to get here very early. I got here about 20 minutes before um, my class was supposed to meet today. If we are interested in what he has to say. Holy Cross students and faculty members grabbed a seat anywhere they could to watch Pope Francis address Congress. A historic moment that had all eyes glued to the live broadcast. I thought it was amazing. Um, it was great seeing him uh, address Congress. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was um, sort of a, an instant cl classic of Catholic social teaching, actually. Pope Francis's speech touched on the death penalty and immigration, but the one part of the speech that got the most applause and resonated most with people here at Holy Cross was when he mentioned the golden rule. It's sometimes very difficult to remember that as we grow up, become adults. And I feel like that was the, probably the best advice you can give Congress. So I called my brother immediately after. Father Michael Rogers has met the Pope during his time overseas. He says the speech was indicative of the Pope's unique style. He does do things differently, that he does have a different way of doing things and proceeding. So it's really, it's really incredible to see that. And that could bode well for the Catholic Church going forward. He's much more clear about how open the church is, I think, and that's something that needs to be repeated in a world where people feel excluded by the church when they shouldn't be. Another element of the Pope's historic trip to the United States. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. An impressive turnout today at the Islamic centers in the city with close to 6,000 local Muslims going to celebrate the Eid al-Adha holiday. It's one of the two major Islamic holidays on the calendar, and those in attendance celebrated with traditional food and dresses after a short sermon. The holiday is a commemoration of the prophet Abraham's willingness to sacrifice in obedience to God.
Today is a happy day for all the Muslim community and as well as sharing this happiness with humanity, with our neighbors. A lot of things going on in the world which I think is really sad, especially this day uh, when Muslims should all be united. But you know, at this point, I would look beyond that because today is a day of celebration. And tragic news tonight out of Saudi Arabia where more than 700 people have died in a stampede. More than 850 others were injured in the stampede on the outskirts of the holy city of Mecca. Officials say it happened at an event where Muslim pilgrims carry out a symbolic stoning of the devil by throwing pebbles against three stone columns. This is just the latest in a wave of deadly stampedes during the pilgrimage. More than 2,500 Muslim pilgrims have died in stampedes since 1990. Another employee working with Worcester Public Schools has been arrested on child pornography charges. 44-year-old bus driver Liam Mallon has been arraigned on two counts of child pornography after police discovered videos of underage boys on his phone. The announcement comes only a few weeks after the arrest of Alexander Johnson, a part-time cafeteria worker who was also arrested for child pornography. For the first time tonight, Superintendent Melinda Boone has released a statement saying that no Worcester Public School students are involved in any ongoing investigation. She also says the Worcester Public Schools cannot comment on personal matters involving current or former employees or regard to reported arrests of employees. A woman in her 90s is taken from her home after she's found living in squalor and police are holding her son responsible. Our Kayla Mamalak has more. Is this where you sleep right now? 96 year old Helen Robillard's home is condemned after she is found living in squalor. Officials found garbage more than three feet high surrounding her inside. This police video shows the home when officials entered. The walls are covered in mold, the bathroom is unusable, there is no running water, and there is so much garbage, Robillard was confined to her couch. So, uh, you know, at 96 years old, God bless us, very strong. Fire Chief Brian Hickey says his team, along with Webster Police and the Department of Health, responded after a call from the Water Department, who were responding to reports of a lack of running water. Hickey says living conditions were deplorable and a notch worse than hoarding. It also looked like trash, so I had rotted food and feces and that type of thing. So, yeah, it's, this is beyond normal hoarding. Officials also condemn the home across the street. It belongs to Helen's son, Michael Robillard. The 68-year-old is being charged for neglect of an elder by a caretaker. I fully expect criminal charges to go against the son for allowing this to happen to his mother. Board of Health Inspector Jen Sullivan says both houses will be demolished. Now you can see I'm standing right in front of the home. There are still plenty of garbage bags outside and the door is boarded up with signs that read condemned. Police say when they arrived, the woman was sitting with a three foot by three foot area, unable to stand. She is now in a nursing facility. Kayla Mamalak, Worcester News Tonight. A big day for the International Center of Worcester as they celebrated their 50th anniversary. The event took place at the Whitcomb Mansion in the city. The ICW operates professional and cultural exchange programs for international visitors in Central Mass. The ICW's mission is to promote international diplomacy and intercultural relationships. Their goal is to create a positive image of America in the minds of visitors through exposure and to American life and culture. Citizen diplomacy is this understanding that not all relationship building on an international scale has to occur within political offices. It can be over a meal, it can be a handshake, it can be meetings and relationship building uh, within citizens in our community. The ICW is always looking to meet new people and really highlight Worcester as well. We not only bring in international visitors to learn professionally, culturally, socially through this exchange, but we also want to promote and highlight the really great people and work and organizations in our community here. Currently, the ICW is hosting 25 people representing 22 different countries.